Hey. Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today I'm responding to a lengthy email from uh, Brad Rich, N6GR, who is uh, ham in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, he's a friend and a patron and a subscriber and has been very supportive of my channel for quite a while. In fact, he came up and helped me install my Step IR um, vertical antenna. I don't think I could have done it without him. Now, he wants to, well, he has, well, he has the bad news that his rotor has failed, so he's got to replace that or fix it. I suspect, you know, you got to go for the simplest first. Is it plugged in? Is there any wires broken? You know, things like that before you start tearing things apart. I saw something on a, a video about a powered parachute where the guy was trying to figure out why his engine quit in flight. One of the nice things about powered parachutes is if your engine quits, you're already parachuting. So anyway, he took the whole engine apart and everything turned out to be the kill switch, which is you got to go look at the simple things first. Okay. Um, he has taken issue with my term of lensing or what might be described best as multiple lobes of an antenna's uh, uh, transmission pattern and that I have not taken into account the uh, gain. So I'm going to first talk a little bit about lobing and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, this right here is a diagram from EZNEC. This is a 20 meter dipole Okay, and it has, it is at one half lambda in height, which is 33 feet. Okay, or I guess that would be 10 meters. Um, and you'll note that at this side we've got our nice lobes out of the dipole. Uh, we would expect it, and this is looking... Um, end on at the dipole which is right here coming out of the page like like this okay and these are the lobes now look at the angle of this lobe it's a 30 degrees now let's look at the beam width we're going to come down to the one third point and down here i'm sorry 3 db down this is how you define uh, the bandwidth on an antenna. We're going to go from here to here. Okay, and from here to here. Okay, you've got one lobe. This is the beam width right here. It's pretty broad. It's pretty broad. And you're going to put all of your power into it. Of course, you got the same thing on the other side. But we look at this here. Uh, one of the interesting things about this, if you look at the gain figure for a dipole, it's 7.41 dBi uh, over an isotropic antenna. Now, normally we think of a dipole as 2.1 over an isotropic antenna. But that doesn't take into effect the ground, which reflects the signal, some of the signal back up, thus strengthening the lobe. Okay, so you get very little coming down from above. So this is not a good S NVIS antenna. And even out here, see, there's it's just not too much. But you get this, and which your power is spread across. Now, let's do a couple things to this antenna. First, let's double its height. So this is one lambda, and again, 20 meters. And uh, that would be 66 feet or 20 meters. Now, you have what I call lensing, the lobe, the lobe that's here breaks into two. You've got this lobe here and this lobe 
here. Okay, so you're just running 100 watts, say. If you're running 100 watts, all your power goes into here. But here, look at this. This is less than a dB different. So let's go down to 3 dB. Okay, so this upper lobe has a pretty good sized beam width. And this lower lobe, we'll take it to the 3, is uh, much lower in elevation than this lobe. Now half of your power goes into this lobe and the other half goes into this lobe because it's much less down. So you've got about, let's just say you're driving it with a 100 watt antenna, 50 and a half. Now remember, you got to split it off over on the other side too. But the point being that there's a dead zone right here and right here. If signals arrive from that angle, you're not going to hear them. It's like a cone of silence or a black hole. We'll call this a black hole. And here's your cone of silence up here. Now you're 10 dB down, so 100 watts, you get 10 watts at most going up. Okay, which is QRP, but sort of QRP. Now let's bring this dipole down to 20 feet or one-third lambda. This is 20 feet. Okay, what's that, about uh, three meters? Um, it's pretty low. This is as high as I can get my antennas. So that means the 20 meter antenna, the, where's the beam width here? Here and here. So our beam on this antenna is here to here, straight up. It also goes out at quite an angle. This is not necessarily a bad antenna, but look at all the power you're wasting going straight up. Now, this is a good NVIS antenna, and you do want to get that. This antenna at this height will get near in contacts, whereas if you go up just 13 more feet, uh, which will give you the original here, you lose your NVIS and your contacts, you can go out closer to the horizon. So. Yeah, the lensing splits up your power, but it does give you here, this is 15 degrees, and this goes all the way down. See, if that's 15, this is 5, 6, 7, to 7 degrees, whereas this right here is at 30 degrees, which goes down to uh, 1, 2, about 11 degrees, okay? So you may end up, having better DX success with the higher antenna, depending. But you've also got this black hole right here, okay? And in NVIS, you've got this whole thing right here. But look at this. This is 5, 10, 15, 20, 22 degrees. Your signal's got to be higher than that. What this means pretty much is no DX, okay? So that's why you want to get your antenna elevated. Height matters. Now, let's turn away from the theory and look at Brad's situation. This right here is Easy NEC Plus uh, version 6. Okay, and the, it's a Step IR DB18 Yagi. Now, what is the source of this model? Brad sent it to me, and I suspect that it came from Step IR. Twenty meters. Okay. Now note that the way a step by R works, it's got a circular tube 
Actually, it's got two of these. And a little stepper motor and a copper tape that is pushed out from here to get to the point where it's the right length. Okay. So if you go to 40 meters, this tape will be pushed out over to here and so on over here, sort of a folded kind of an arrangement. For 10 meters, it just gives it out here. Okay, so the point being that you can't use this model on a different frequency. It is set up for 20 meters. Now, there's all kinds of things in here that are important. This is another page in the model. And um, these are the six wires. You've got an antenna like this, and it divides them each in half. Okay, so six wires. And it gives you, you know, here the end one, end two, and so on. And it's got all this information. It's also got information about connections. Okay. Um, and it's got uh, the diameters of the conductors, the segments that you're going to cut it into for modeling, and the insulation um, and the dielectric coefficient of the insulation and how thick the insulation is. Okay. In this case, that's the tube itself, which is plastic or fiberglass. All right, this defines the antenna. Defines antenna. Right here, this defines the antenna to the model. Now, if we look at this, here's your SWR. Um, and it's about 1.3 to 1. Now, why is it that? It's because um, the antenna, when tuned properly to the right length, has some reactance. Okay, that reactance keeps this from going down to zero. If you go down to zero, that means there's no reactance in the system. It's purely resistive. You cannot do that with a dipole because there will be some reactance. You can't get a dipole down to one to one. If you've been fussing with a dipole trying to get it down to one to one and you succeed, that means you've introduced some resistance in there somewhere to lower the Q, which then lowers the efficiency of the antenna. Now, um, step IR recommends that you do not put a tuner on this antenna. Uh, if you do, you could get that down to one to one, but um, they suggest not doing it anyway uh, 1.3 to 1 is fine for all modern radios now you don't have to worry about this or this you're not going to take care of it with your tuner you're going to lengthen or shorten the wire that tape wire tape uh, that's inside the uh, inside the tube okay which will move this back and forth like that and that's the beauty of the antenna these antennas are made by STEP IR, S T E P P I R, and you can go look at them. They're a company up in the um, Pacific Northwest, and uh, they they make these. These are pricey antennas. So let's look at the beam width of this thing. I put the antenna at 75 feet because Brad's tower is 70 feet. And he's got about a five foot mast on top. So we're up to about um, 75 feet. So we want to look for the 3 dB point because we're going to define beam width. And beam width is arbitrarily defined as where it's 3 dB down. So we're going to go from here to here. This is the looking down on the antenna. The antenna's right below us. So this is the beam width of the antenna. It's actually pretty nice, pretty sharp. You've got very low side lobes. 
here that just aren't going to matter a whole lot. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if you're listening around for signals and you've got a signal over here, you're probably not going to hear it. Whereas if you've got a dipole, you probably will. So now let's look at the key thing that matters, the elevation pattern. This is 20 meters, and 66 feet would be 2 lambda, or 75. So we're slightly above that. So here's lobe 1, here's lobe 2. Here is the third lobe just starting to develop. This lobe is with 13 dB down, so it's 1% of the power is in this lobe. This lobe's your main one. This one is down just a little over 3 dB down, okay? So if we have 100 watts, and I'm going to say 100, think of it as 100% power. Okay, we're going to be at about 66 here and about 34 here, okay? So now let's look at the gain. The gain is 12.39 dBi. Now, classically, we subtract 2.15 to get it to dBd, which is what everybody really thinks of. Let's just say it's about 10 dB gain over dipole. 10 dB. So if you've got 66 watts going to this, you're going to get a 10 dB boost in this for the EIRP in this direction. So that'd be 660 watts, okay? Now, if you, in addition to this, have a 1,000-watt amplifier that's uh, 30 dB, you get 106 dB EIRP in this direction. Uh, it, the, it's at 13 degrees, this right here. And let's draw the bandwidth. Okay, it's going to be very narrow. Okay, here's your elevation pattern right here for the antenna. It's low, it's very low. This is a very good DX antenna because you come up and hit the ionosphere at a low angle so it reflects down a long ways away. It's a very good TX antenna. Now you've got this little sleeper up here. We're going to go with a beam with 3 dB down. Here. And that there. We get the 3 dB point from its peak. So you've got something about the same size with half the power in this. This is not a terribly good uh, DX antenna, but you never know. You've got this lobe and this lobe you can receive things with. This right here is a steep null. Okay, let's call it a black hole. Right here, anything that comes in here, you're not going to get. Now this is the advantage of your 20 meter dipole. Now this comes all the way down to 7 degrees. This is 11 degrees here. Okay, this is 7 degrees, 11 degrees here. You get the whole thing, whereas it looks, I mean just at first glance, You've bifurcated your pattern and you're throwing away what's in the middle. But this doesn't have the gain that this does. So you're going to get your DX here and you're going to get your, some DX here. Um, stateside signals and so on are going to be here. You aren't going to get anything out here because these are so far down. Okay, you might get a little bit, but I mean they're way down. So if Brad were to be pointing to the east, and he hears a station in Phoenix here, you can ask the station in Phoenix to wait just a second while he brings his beam all the way around and points it at Phoenix. 
um, he'd probably be using that one right there. Now note that you've got this cone of silence up here. You're not throwing any power up, so this is not a good NVIS antenna uh, because too much power goes straight up. Okay, I think we've addressed Brad's concerns. He's got two major lobes. He's got half his power, and I'm sorry, 33% of his power, or 34% of his power in this lobe, and 66% of his power in this lobe. This is a significant lobe. The point he makes, and I agree, I have not emphasized that in the past, that this low lobe in the lensing, if he were to go up higher, this lobe would become a little more significant. This lobe would become bigger, and this lobe would go lower, but you're already at seven degrees uh, at the bottom beam width of that. And uh, the center of that is 13 degrees. So you add seven to that, and you go up to 20 degrees. Then you've got this 20 or quite a few degree wide uh, null in here where you're not going to pick anything up. It's funny the way antennas work. If he were to go up another 30 feet, this lobe would drop slightly. This would drop slightly. This would move over a little bit and become larger until you got the, and you can just go up and down with this sort of thing. Now, how can you avoid this black hole problem? Um, what some DXers do is they'll have a, a tower, okay, and they'll put their Yagi on top, and then they'll put another Yagi further down. I mean, obviously, to do this, you really got to like to spend money. But this one, this one can cover the nulls on this one because of the height difference, okay? That's an expensive way to cover the nulls, but it does work, okay? So there you have it. Uh, Brad, I hope I answered the questions that uh, uh, you sent in your letter to say that, uh, yes, you are correct. I was uh, not noticing that the low null does give you excellent DX in this direction, but the price to pay is you've got this black hole right in here. Okay, and then this other one up here, so you've got some further in DX, some further out DX, uh, depending on the ionosphere. I have to point out that the ionosphere is not really something you can depend on. Uh, it's changing all the time. We, we can get um, sort of nice uh, stuff on it. Now, um, I want to talk about the giveaway. Okay, a, a new feature of this channel is the giveaway. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my second giveaway to hams in the USA, in the USA for postage cost reasons. The item to be given away this time is a book. No, it's not a book. The item to be given away this time this is giveaway number two, is the My Antennas NFED Halfwave 80 through 10 can handle a thousand watts of single sideband. It's an NFED antenna. It's got this, I suspect what it is, I haven't done any tests, 49 to 1 ballon right here, okay. Um, specifications, it covers all bands except 60. Uh, it covers about 100 kilohertz on 80. Uh, and you cannot change that to 75. You need to buy the NFED Halfwave 7510 to get 75 meters. But this right here will get you FT8 on 80 meters. And if it covers all of 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, and 12, and the bottom part of 10, which is where the activity is. Okay. Um, it's a really nice antenna. I've tested it. I did a video on it. Uh, it was uh, purchased originally using channel funds, and now this is a chance, since you guys bought it, is a chance for me to give back to you by, um, by having a giveaway. Now here's how you get it. 
you send, here's an example of a letter, you send a postcard, and yes, you can still get postcards at the post office, and they're less than the cost for first class mail. Um, or you can send a letter like this one right here, uh, single page, please enter me into drawing number two. And he's got his shipping address down here and his phone number. So those are the things I need. I don't need your email address. I need your phone number in case there are questions. I need uh, your shipping address, your call sign, and your name. We will have the drawing during the live stream on September 30th. What I'll do is I'll shuffle those up real good and stick my finger into the pile and open it up and see who it goes to. Now, this is important. All of the entries go in the trash um, after the drawing, immediately after the drawing. There's no transcription of anything. We don't keep any information on anybody, okay? So it's private. And then what I did like last time, Tom won the book and I took his QSL card, which is what I pulled out, and I popped it into the envelope and went back to him. So I'm preserving privacy as completely as I can here. One of the ways that a lot of people like is called Patreon. Uh, you can become a patron of this channel on a monthly or annual basis and uh, it will automatically collect that from your account and put it over into uh, my PayPal account once a month. Uh, so they, they collect it up there and send it over once a month. One of the nice things about Patreon is if you're a supporter on Patreon, uh, we put a video several days early before it's actually released to the public. We'll put it up on Patreon so you can see that video. We do that once a week. Okay, so that's a, a perk for using Patreon. Uh, please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. And until we next meet, 73.